<laughs> that is spicy. <laughs> how was it? How was it? It was good. A little, a little hot for my Cuban blood, but very good. <laughs> you know, garlicky. Oh, those honestly, are big. Honestly, these ones are really good. The Oaxaca ones are. Those are gonna be fried with and uh, chilies and lime. Did somebody didn't know they were eating crickets for these. Right? They wouldn't tell the difference. Yeah, Fun I think it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So we are at the International Congress of Entomology in a special symposium all about eating bugs. And this is known as entomophagy. This is something that seems to be really picking up and a growing community of people who grow, you know, insects as feed. Is that correct? Uh, for food and feed, absolutely. Gotcha. So, uh, what, how did you become involved in this, you know, entomophagy? I was a bartender in Austin, and my mom sent me a video about eating insects as a joke, which I took way too seriously. I started cold calling entomologists at land grant universities, got some really interesting reactions, and eventually got connected with uh, David Gracer and other uh, kind of folks who'd been preaching this idea for years. Uh, I, after that, I got plugged in with a lot of the, the early stage farms, the product makers, those, those entrepreneurs who are really taking this idea forward and uh, founded Little Herds as an educational nonprofit to help show the public why they should try a cricket protein bar or a chapelina's taco. So why should we? I think most people, at least in American culture, think bugs are gross and not necessarily something to eat. So why should they? Well, and, and we tell people that's a completely normal reaction here in the West and the U.S. But uh, they're highly nutritious. Uh -huh. They're extremely resource efficient. We can farm them and harvest them in a, a much more humane manner than a lot of other livestock options. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we can abstract it for Western consumers. So you don't have to see it, feel it, or taste it. We can turn it into a powder. We can fortify our foods, and, and you can eat the things you love. Chips, crackers, cookies, breads, and you're still getting all that nutrition, still saving all those resources. Right. I mean, we've got some samples here. I thought they were pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely the spicy uh, chocolatinis be good in tacos. I can see that. That's right. Yep. Yeah. I think, I mean, honestly, like, we eat crustaceans, you know? Oh, we yeah. eat crab and lobster. Yeah. I never really got why we're so comfortable with that, but not bugs, just as they walk on land. They're just some crunchy crabs, man. I don't know. Absolutely. And these, these are pretty good. I'm all about it's it. Delicious. Yeah. So what are the main insects that you're looking at? Here we have grasshoppers and crickets. I would say that crickets are, are definitely the, the biggest species just because there's a, there's a lot of people farming them. Okay. We knew a lot about how to farm them from the pet food industry and yeah. we've had to kind of take that and update those practices for food purposes. Yeah. But uh, mealworms are another one that's heavily used, especially in Europe. Uh, grasshoppers definitely down in Mexico, parts of uh, Africa. And then beyond that, we're, we're really just trying to find those new species that we can utilize, whether it's you know using silkworm pupa after we use them for silk, whether it's uh, you know something like a tarantula that's supposed to taste a lot like soft shell crab. Yeah. Um, but really looking at cultures around the world and those traditions where, where people have been eating these for generations, and, uh, and looking at those as, as how we can explore the, the culinary aspects of this. Yeah. Cool. For, for someone who's maybe on the fence, they've never had an insect and they're not quite sure, what do you think is the best way to get introduced into trying it out? Chocolate chip cookies made with cricket powder. Okay. I mean, you, you can't see it, feel it, or taste it, but again, you're getting that nutrition. And you know that you're eating the insect, and so a lot of times people will try that, and they're much more open to trying the whole insect, because they're like, you know, I ate a bug, I knew it was in there, it was still delicious. All right, so let's just give it a try. Awesome. And Tomo Feiji, get out there and try some bugs. Well, I started eating because they're delicious, for one thing. And they are uh, a food that we're going to have to get used to. I don't think there's any question about that. But the, invent the environmental footprint is uh, different, too favorable to not eat them. Okay, and so they're, they can be a, a powerful alternative food source to what we currently have today. They're powerful. They're also delicious. I started eating them in Rwanda in the middle 80s, fresh, um, brown locusts I think they were. And do you have uh, any advice for people to get out there and try some bugs? Yeah, I mean just try them. And try them whole, uh, collect them in your backyard like I do. Um, I have cooked uh, for thousands and thousands of people. Um, what do you want the world to know about entomophagy? It's, if the word puts you off, just think about edible insects. Think about land shrimp. Okay? Land shrimp. Yeah, which was actually invented by one of the other speakers today. But I think it's a great term. It, it's comfortable and it's, um, it doesn't have the other connotations that Western culture thinks are so negative. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a food that humans have eaten for ever since they've been humans and it allowed them to eat. Right. It's, if you care about your health, 
And if you care about the health of the environment, you're going to eat meat. You're going to choose. Yeah.